All right, thank you so much, Frankie. A number of hearings happening on Parliament Hill, looking into scandals plaguing Hockey Canada, RCMP's use of spyware. And of course, we continue to watch what's happening at our airports right across the country. So with an update on all of this, City News Ottawa reporter Shali Lee joins us now. Good morning to you. Hello, hello. Hi. Okay, so I just want to first off address, we are having some, you know, uh, Wi-Fi issues here, so we are going to do our very best in this, so thank you for bearing with us. I want to begin here, Shao, with what's ha happening with Hockey Canada. We saw an appointment earlier on this week, and we are seeing them looking to fill a position that really addresses uh, some concerns that we've seen for quite some time. So can you provide us an update on what you've been following here? Yeah, obviously it's uh, the Parliament summer break, but uh, with the Hockey Canada scandal breaking down as it is, the House of Commons, uh, one, of, one of the committees has been called back to try and get to the bottom of exactly what's happening with Hockey Canada. If we go back to the start, this came to light uh, because a woman filed suit alleging a sex assault in 2018 in London, Ontario by eight CHL players, including members of the World Junior Team. Hockey Canada settled. And then there's this question of, you know, well, where did the money come from? And that is what the committee is trying to get to the bottom of, where the money came from. We've already learned that it came from the National Equity Fund, which was funded by registration fees, which Hockey Canada has used to pay out sex assault claims. Now, Hockey Canada was at committee on June 20th and I believe on the 26th, but the answers that uh, MPs got, they were really not happy with them. They seemed really unprepared to talk the, the specifics of cases as well as the number of abuse cases that Hockey Canada sees each year. Uh, really, they're just trying to get to the bottom of exactly how this happened. Why wasn't the sport minister informed? Who is ultimately responsible for trying to police this kind of bad conduct? Because Hockey Canada in the hearing seemed to say, you know, what we can do is we can put down a code of conduct. We don't really have an ability to compel con good conduct. Uh, and of course, uh, we're watching what's happening in, in Edmonton. And, and we've, we've talked to our colleagues out there where, you know, ticket sales were... You know, there, there's obviously uh, shedding a negative light um, on our athletes out there right now, considering what we've been following here out of Ottawa, which will continue to do so, Shao. Uh, let's get to our airports now. It is, is the ever-growing issue that doesn't seem to want to go away. Uh, we saw it released yesterday, or actually it was two days ago, Omar Al-Gabra, uh, transport minister, putting it out there saying, here's what we're putting into place, right? So uh, it doesn't look like arrived hands going anywhere anytime soon. I know there was some pressure for that to be lifted, considering there are some inconsistencies when it comes to that random testing and then inputting uh, your information in there, a lot of a lot of that. And he is expected to testify at some point. Do we have a timeline just yet? Because I know there was supposed to be some movement uh, by the end of this week and then into next week. We don't have a specific date yet, but we have a deadline for the transport minister to appear. He's supposed to appear no later than August 22nd. And really, they just want to get some answers, obviously, because I mean, Transport Canada, their messaging on this has been not the most useful for travelers. They've reemphasized again that, of course, travelers who are delayed are entitled to compensation if it's due to staff shortages, though, of course, the airlines seem to be disagreeing on that point at this time. And, of course, the federal government continuing to put out numbers saying, you know, delays, cancellations, they're down. They said in the first week of August, 3% of flights were canceled compared to 12% in July. That's really not helpful or useful or reassuring to the travelers who show up at Pearson or one of our many other airports and end up being told, hey, your flight's canceled and sorry, we can't do anything for you. Right. You've rebooked your life and you want to know how they're going to be compensated in whichever way that becomes. So we'll be watching those hearings indeed. I want to get to this now. Uh, a lot of criticism from privacy experts about the RCMP's use of spyware. Uh, and they've come back, uh, you know, basically saying this is within our means, but many people saying it is quite intrusive. Uh, what is your take here? Yeah, this is really, really disturbing because this is a case of the RCMP using what they call on-device investigative tools. These are uh, software applications that can be installed on your phone remotely without your knowledge. They can read your messages, turn on the uh, camera and turn on the microphone and try and hear what you're doing. Now, the RCMP says it's only used in limited cases where a judge approves and they're time limited and you can only uh, use it to try and get information on the indiv individual covered in the warrant. So it's not like they can just turn it on all the time. If it hears someone else in the room, if they hear your kids or something like that, obviously they got to turn it off because that's not relevant. But MPs are really skeptical of the RCMP's take on this, not least of all because our national police, they really haven't been super forthcoming on this. Parliament previously asked how often these tools were used. 
We heard 10 times between 2017 and 2018, but then in a letter to the Ethics and Privacy Committee, uh, RCMP Commissioner Brenda Lucky said it was actually 32 cases on 49 devices, and neither the current nor the previous Privacy Commissioner were informed. The new Privacy Commissioner only coming into the job, I believe, in June, and he admitted that he only heard about it because he read the news. So, Shah, you're telling me they were snooping. I see you. I see that shirt. I see it. I see it. Um, summer. If Parliament is on summer break, I might as well wear my summer shirt. Let's <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Okay, can you just give us a full view? I know you're holding a phone right now. Just, just give us a little tilt. We want to get the full impact of this shirt here, if we can. Can you do it? Let's oh, see shall. Yeah, we there we go. Do. Oh, very nice. Snoopy and Woodstock. There we go. Very cool. All right, shall appreciate it. There it is. Have a great weekend. <laughs>